Hey, what's up guys? It is 7 a.m. and I was bored so I figured I'd make a video for you guys. Um, this is my HP touchpad and I wanted to show you guys that it was actually running. If you scroll down to about phone, you see that it is actually running Android 4.3 Jelly Bean. And I just figured I would show this to you guys because most Android phones and tablets don't even have Android 4.1. <laughs> And I figured this tablet, it's a WebOS tablet. I love WebOS. But I just thought it was funny that a WebOS tablet has the latest operating system before most actual Android devices that are released. So I don't know why that's funny. I just thought it was. But go to settings. We can kind of check out some of the features that you have. So the home screen. Now, I did leave this as Trebuchet because I had to wipe everything from 4.2. On 4.2, I did have everything set up, like my games and all of my apps, but Titanium Backup decided to just delete it when I was installing 4.3, so that's always fun. But Trebuchet is, if you don't want it, like download Nova Launcher or something like that, this is basically has all those options, but it's built into the actual ROM itself, so that's pretty cool. So we have grid size, so you can change the grid size. You can set it all the way up to 10 by 10. You can stretch the screen, so you can have the search bar. I kind of wish you could change the grid size in the actual um, uh, app drawer, but you can't. You can have the dock if you want to, general. If you don't have auto-rotate screen, it auto-rotates anyways because this is a tablet. So I think that's kind of meant more towards the phones. Um, if we go to lock screen, see we have screen security. We can change these slider shortcuts. See, I just kind of left them as default after I installed because when I had it set up on 4.2, it actually... You know, I had everything set up, but I didn't really feel like messing with the lock screen because if you go to lock it and unlock it, I used to have my Gmail widget, and then I had Plume, and I had something else, but I don't remember what it was. But see, I just kind of left the default unlock shortcuts. Most of them don't work because there is no phone app. There is no messaging app. So, yeah. Um, you can change the settings for the clock widget. You do have your CM10.2 um, theme chooser theme. I just, I don't know, for some reason every time I apply a theme, it kind of slows the device down. It may just be me, just, I don't know, but it, so I just kind of leave it as stock. Um, if we go to interface, we can go to status bar. You don't have as much, like, to choose from as you do on the phone, but I mean, nevertheless, it's still there if you kind of wanted to choose it. So you can choose your CM circle. I kind of have it without the percentage because I think it looks cleaner. My battery is about to die. Um, quick settings panel see if we pull this down. I love that they included the camera feature so if I There you go. We have the front-facing camera that you see my finger going over and I kind of like that it actually works um, I like that on the uh, CM 10 on the on the phones because you can have the back camera and see it kind of freezes up the device So kind of give it a give it a minute to force close the system UI There we go. So the system UI force closes but, I mean, it's no big deal. You get used to it. And you don't really use it that much anyways. So Now, you can choose the tiles and layout. Yes, my battery's dying. You can choose the tiles and layout. And go back. On the notification drawer, this is where you can have your toggles over, over on this side. I don't really see the point. If you have them on this side, you can quickly pull down both. So, there's really no point. Expanded desktop. If you long press the power, see we have expanded desktop. I have it to where it hides the status bar and the navigation bar because if, if you're playing games like I don't know need for speed you don't want to accidentally hit the home button or the recent apps button in the middle of a race because it gets pretty annoying so on all CM builds like when I'm playing a game or something like that I hide the status bar and I hide that I do not use Pi because Pi just sucks I hate it you guys may have a different opinion but you can also choose different shortcuts when you long press and slide up but you know I just kind of leave it as default um, sound, display, and lights, basically all like the same thing you get on every build, so I'm not really going to go, alright, I guess I'm not going to go through settings anymore. It's just all basic stuff. See, I have a few apps installed. This is where I wish you could change the app drawer, the grid layout. I don't even know why I still have that. I don't really care for it. But, see, this is just kind of my media device. I had a few games. I had, you know, Need for Speed. Games? Um, Netflix and YouTube, they both work just fine, so if I go ahead and open up YouTube, you know, YouTube takes forever to load up. I mean, it's just kind of, but see, if we load this up, and, <laughs> um, we hit the recent apps button, don't fail me now. 
All right, so sometimes this happens. When you hit the recent apps, it doesn't work. But say you open up, let's go back to settings. Wait for this. Recent apps, it usually loads back up whenever you hit that. I'm not sure why it's not working. But yeah, we just managed to break something. So video 7 a.m., I already broke something. Um, going back down, say we have buttons. It's not really anything that works, I guess. <laughs> Uh, that was a complete fail, but I have used my headphones on this with Netflix. They do work. There is no staticky or anything like that. Bluetooth. People have reported issues with Bluetooth. I own nothing that uses Bluetooth, so I can't really say I have that issue. Um, but everything else works. Wi-Fi works fine. I do not have a speed test app. Um, I don't. Yeah, everything basically works for me. You can play games, you can watch YouTube, which is, I use this for my media. So when I'm laying in bed, I pick up my tablet to watch YouTube and Netflix and Pandora. They all work fine, no issues. And to keep Wi-Fi on, we go back to settings if it doesn't decide to force close on us. Um, hit the menu button, go to advanced, and make sure that you have, um, I forgot which one it was, something. It was, I think, Wi-Fi priority, no? There was something in here. I, don't, I can't remember. It's not here in the latest. Oh, here we go. Wi-Fi optimization. I wasn't seeing it because in the earlier builds, it was actually up here at the top so you could see it better. If you want Wi-Fi to work while the screen is off, make sure to uncheck Wi-Fi optimization. So that's always there. And if you want to make things more tablet-like, you can change the screen density. I, used, I had it on about 130 DPI on CM. 10.1 and it looked like the uh, Asus Transformer Prime you know how it has that layout that's what it looked like the status bar and the notification bar were still separate but there is a few patches that you can find around you know XDA that gives it the real tablet UI like back in CM9 so if you wanted that that is always available and to download this I will have a link below to the XDA thread and also just download Goo Manager open up Goo Manager, go to Browse Compatible ROMs, go to MyLac, go to Tenderloin, because that's the code name for the HP Touchpad, and see you can have CM10.1. I was actually using his CM10.1 builds, but now he has CM10.2. So just download this, you click it, you begin download, and you also need the G apps for Android 4.3. You can also find those on here. So if we go to Browse All Files, Go to G apps, and if you scroll down to JB 813 2013, you need to download those. Hit back, go back again, and once you actually install this ROM, what you can do is go to check for updates. See, there's no updates because I'm running the latest build, but it'll pop up here. And what you're gonna do is pull down your notification bar. You tap that, it will download the build. And then you hit install ROM and it will reboot into Twerp for you and it will automatically install the ROM for you. So you honestly don't really have to do much. I mean, yeah, it does everything for you with Twerp once you're installing. And also I recommend that you go to menu up here and you go to install open script recovery. You hit yes and make sure you have the latest Twerp recovery, which is 2.6.3. It may be newer by the time you guys watch this video, but that is it right now. And that is actually the build that I'm running. So, yeah, I <coughs> excuse me. I have had no issues with this ROM. Like I said, I couldn't try Bluetooth. The recent apps button kind of hiccups a little bit, but you get it back after a short while. I don't remember what I did. It happened on um, an ear earlier uh, nightly, about a week ago. <laughs> I did something, and I don't remember what I did. So I'm just gonna leave it there and act like nothing happened. But yeah, that's basically it, guys. I showed you how to install it. Not really, but I did show you where you get it from. I will post a link below to the XDA forum. I will also post a direct link to the Goo.im website, a direct link to download the ROM. Make sure to wipe data, wipe cache. You also need to repartition the system size. If you guys don't know how to do that, um, there is a video in the XDA thread that shows you how to repartition the size in WebOS. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but, yeah, if you guys like this video, thumbs up or always appreciated. Bad lighting is always here. <laughs> I'm lying. It's it's early. There's The sun's not even out yet, honestly. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.